What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, super important episode, we are talking about sparring etiquette. So important. Why do not enough people have this down pat? How can you possibly go in and spar with somebody and do everything wrong that I'm going to mention today? If you want to be a better sparring partner, this is the episode for you. If you want your training buddies to be better sparring partners, share this with them, get it out, and make sure everybody understands what you should be doing when you're sparring so you're just not being a big old jerk. So guys, intro first, and then all the points of etiquette, which I believe make for a good sparring partner. All right, gyms are opening back up and now is a great time to start going through your sparring etiquette to make sure as you get back to the gym, as you start training with people, sparring with people, you are not doing all the moves which I deem completely inappropriate and nobody is going to appreciate. And most of these guys are just personal experience factors with me, times that people have done things which I really dislike or things over the years I've learned, well, I don't wanna do that because it's just not a nice thing to do and nobody is going to wanna spar with you again after. So first up, and this is something that you will learn very quickly when you're in Thailand. I already knew this before, but when you were over there, I saw some foreigners try to front kick people in the face. If they front kick a Thai in the face, they are going to whip you for it. They do not appreciate it. It is, I guess, the bottom of the foot considered dirty to come up and front kick somebody right in the face. Jerk move. Do not do it. I throw front kicks to the face in my fights all the time, but I will never throw a front kick to the face that is going to land in a sparring session. I'll still throw it up, but I'll always pull it. I'm never pushing through with the bottom of my foot. Absolute do not, because number one, it's just disrespectful, but number two, it's very easy to break somebody's nose or really damage them with this kick, and there's no padding on the bottom of the foot. Throw a round kick, you have shin pads on. You have your gloves on, you got padding. When I spar and I throw knees, I have knee pads on. We don't elbow hard, and we don't use the bottom of our foot to the face. Number two, Pull shots when you can. If I'm working away here and the guy's gloves are up and I'm hitting glove, 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 and then maybe I pull down an arm and his head is exposed and I go right through because I can, that's just a jerk move. If I know I can hit him, I'm gonna pull. If I see the round kick coming and the guy thinks it's to the body, he drops his arms and I know I can land to the head, don't be the guy who puts the person down just because they can. Pull your shot. Pull your shot, keep your partner safe, they will appreciate it, they will come back, they will spar with you again. Next point, consistent power. I hate when I'm sparring with somebody and they're moving around. Tap, 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 tap. I think the pace of the, of the round is gonna be like that and then all of a sudden, boom! And they just try to knock me out and I'm not even ready for that pace and then they go back to, uh, and then you try and hit them hard back and they're like, oh, whoa, let's go light. So you go back to light. They move around, they're touching, and then all of a sudden, boom! And you're going, what are we doing here? Are we either sparring hard or are we sparring light? You have to choose. It's one or the other. It's not, oh, let's go light when I want to, and then let's go hard when the guy's not ready. I always establish before the round starts, before the first round of sparring, oh, how hard do you want to go? Do you want to do a light round or a hard round? Oh, you want hard? Okay, so I know. Consistent power, talk it out beforehand. Everybody is happy with that approach. Next, guys. Wear some knee pads. I don't actually have any in this room to show you right now, but I have many around the house. When I come in, like we already talked about, if I throw a front kick to the guy's face, there's no padding on the bottom of my foot. If I elbow without an elbow pad, jerk move, because it's bone there. If I knee somebody in the ribs with no protection, there's a chance I'm going to crack, fracture, break a rib. If I put a nice little knee pad on, I can knee away and the chance of damaging him is so much less. I'd say about 10 years ago, the only people I saw wearing knee pads out of all the gyms across the whole country, everywhere I'd been, was the dudes that I trained with. We were the only people. Now it's a little better. I'd say it's more like 20 to 40% of people wear knee pads. Why would you not? Invest in some knee pads. Keep your partner safe. Keep your knees safe. It also really hurts if I throw a round kick and you throw a round kick and we clash knees. Somebody gets really hurt in that situation. Maybe both people. Knee pads on, everybody's safe. It costs what? $50, $60? Get some knee pads. Next up, guys. When you are doing your sparring rounds, don't attack the knees. I hate when people come in and they, you know, 
kick right to the joint as opposed to catching towards the thigh. The thigh is an appropriate target for sparring, the knee is not. You hurt somebody's thigh, they hobble away, a day or two later, they're fine. Kick somebody's knee, damage their ACL, damage something else, they could be out for a month plus. It's just good manners, do not target the knees. Next up guys, and we already talked partially about this with knee pads, but wear proper gear. If I'm going in for a sparring session and I'm wearing these gloves, these are 10 ounce, First of all, I'm going to be able to slip my hand through a little easier because the gloves are smaller. Second of all, most of the time that means less padding. Appropriate gear is so important. Proper size gloves, knee pads, and proper shin pads. Don't come in with a shin pad that is super thin. Get a proper $100, $150 pair of shin pads that has some nice thickness to it that will protect your partner properly. It's no good to be chintzy when somebody's health is at stake. Next point. Don't aim for your partner's nose. You can hit them in the nose and you're gonna cause bleeding and you might bend it and they're gonna have a crooked nose or you can just very simply go up to the forehead. I go for the forehead very often when I spar. Sometimes I'll touch the jaw light, but I try all the time to not touch the nose. It's bound to happen once in a while, you know, when you get in exchanges and just accidentally you hit them in the nose. But for the most part, I hate when people come out and the first shot they throw is right to my nose. And the next shot is right to my nose. And I go, well, you're just being a jerk. There's no need for that. Just target somewhere a little higher. Keep everybody a little safer, a little happier. It's just a nice thing to do. This next one irks me so much. Don't beat up people just because you can. Don't beat up people less skilled than you because it's easy. This is just something that you should know with time and experience and usually that means you're the better fighter. With time and experience comes the skill level to do it but not always the recognition that just because I can touch this guy and touch him and fake and touch him and low kick him and I can do all that, well good for you. It doesn't mean you need to hurt this guy. There are always ways to challenge yourself in sparring and get something out of it without beating somebody up just because they're not near your skill level. You need to recognize as soon as you start sparring, okay, I'm hitting him, okay, I'm hitting him, I'm hitting him, oh shoot, well this is too easy, I gotta draw back, I gotta keep this guy safe. Recognize skill level, recognize how hard you should be going, keep your opponent safe, and don't beat somebody up just because you're better than them jerk move. And one more guys, kind of opposite of what I just said, if you're the higher skill level fighter, if you are the lower skill level fighter now, don't feel like you can throw all your shots hard just because you're sparring somebody who's supposed to be better than you. I really don't appreciate it when somebody comes into the gym, they're like, hey Gabe, you want to do some sparring rounds? And I go, sure. I know this guy can't give me any challenge. I know he's not at my skill level, but sure, I'll do some, some rounds to help him out. And the first thing they do is they run out and they're trying to take my head off. Usually I get pretty upset and my natural reaction is I want to hit them but I dig deep I go no you know I won't hurt this guy I'm gonna sweep him I'm gonna throw him I'm gonna lay him down lots of times on the ground make him tired make him get back up that's me being the nice fighter like the previous point we talked about as the more skilled guy but if you are the lower skill guy, make sure you recognize that you still have to make sure you're protecting the higher skill fighter. Just because you're learning doesn't give you the opportunity to be a jerk and try and take people's heads off. You can still come in and still go, okay, you know what, I'm a little nervous, I'm a little scared, but I'm still gonna try and just work slow and get the pace down and just make sure I'm learning and not trying to destroy this guy. It's not a token to go as hard as you can just because somebody's a higher skill level. So this is obviously for more of the beginners out there who are just learning. And very often this will save you because you come out as a beginner fighter and you try to take somebody's head off and they get ticked off and then they lay you out. I wouldn't do that. A lot of other guys will, hopefully not after watching this video, but recognize if you try and take off an advanced fighter's head, there's a good chance he's coming back for you. All right guys, what else? makes somebody a jerk sparring partner. Throw it in the comments below. I'm sure everybody out there has had many experiences with somebody who's just doing something incredibly wrong. And if you guys are watching this video right now, scroll down through the comments, look at all the other points that frustrate people, sort of log them into your brain and it'd be a good sparring partner. People appreciate it. It makes the sport more fun to be a part of. All right, that is it for today. If you guys enjoyed the episode, give it a like. If you haven't already joined the channel and get subscribed, Train hard guys, I'll see you back here soon for another video.